Hello and welcome back to another segment of Center Stage with Jake Majors. I am Serenity Douglas, your host, and this is the man himself, the star, Jake Majors. How are you today? Hold on. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Congratulations. The first win of the season in the first game by 20 points. That's a lot to say. That's a, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, did you enjoy the game? <laughs> I did. It was electric. Yeah, it was. I want to use that word for it. It was electric. And seeing the new part of the stadium, I know you guys are with it every day. Yeah. But being in it and standing under it, I was like, this is beautiful. I thought it was just going to be a tunnel that y'all run out of. Mm-hmm. But it was like a facility, people eating, socializing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it brings a whole new feel to DKR. I really do like it a lot. It does. And all those people like just eating and high-fiving us as we walk in and out of the tunnel was pretty cool. The fans were great. Yeah, they were. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Describe, go through the atmosphere with me. From Bebo Boulevard, I'm not sure, stepping off of the bus, even the hotel. Yeah. Just take me through it. Um, you know, the hotel's kind of our chance to uh, just isolate ourselves and focus on the game plan, get together, go over last minute notes. And then as we progress, you know, we wake up in the morning, we get ready for Bevo Boulevard. That's whenever, you know, the game's about to start and it's going to be, you know, it's getting close to game time. And as you step off the bus, you know, you look around, you see all the people, you're like, man, like they're here for us. And it's pretty cool. And then as we walk down Bevo Boulevard, you know, you just soak it all in because that was my first Bevo Boulevard. And I was like, dang, this is awesome. This is kind of something that I dream of. You know, wanted people to cheer me on as I play the game I love. And then uh, warming up, there wasn't many people in the stadium, which is okay, because by the time I went out again, there's people everywhere. And I was like, holy cow. Like, the student section overflowed. I was like, this is going to be awesome. And then uh, kickoff, it was electric. And then that first play I went out there, I looked around. I was like, holy cow, this is going to be a great game. And that it was. What was in your headphones on the bus ride to the Bebo Boulevard? Um, I don't know. I just have a playlist that I found. I just turn it on. I mean, I can't really recall what music I was listening to. Um, whenever I calm, whenever I try and calm down, I'm a big Bob Marley fan. So that tells you. Really? Yes. Jake Majors is a Bob Marley fan. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's really hard to believe. (laughs) That's really hard to believe for some reason. But I guess it makes sense because you're always like very cool and calm yeah yeah okay I mean, it helps. I just, that just it just kind of helps me whenever it comes to game time being cool and collected because you know I know I've been here before and I don't want to get too nervous or too anxious because then I don't play like myself so yeah what was the most memorable part about walking down Bebo Boulevard what did you notice um honestly it was just seeing my parents there because it was our first Bebo Boulevard together and seeing them cheer me on as I walked down Bevo Boulevard was awesome getting to hug them and see all the fans and give them high fives and just knowing that all this support is behind us because we put a lot of hard work into this season and it means a lot seeing it all pay off. Who had the best stepping off of the bus fit on or at least out of the old linemen? Out of the old linemen? Probably, um, probably Isaiah Hookman. I don't know if y'all saw he had the purple – Blazer and the gold spiky shoes. I it was, it was a good look. It was a good look. I liked it. I don't know if I'd wear the spiky shoes, but <laughs> it was a good look. It's a fashion show. Yeah. And I think all of the freshmen kind of realize that too. Yeah. Just seeing everybody else like, okay. Oh, yeah. like we're really dressing up for this. Yeah. <laughs> because even on the track team, when sometimes we would well, our coach once tried to get us to dress up to go to the airport. And sometimes you're kind of trying to gauge it, like, okay, are we doing heels? Are we really going all out? You know, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. But when I saw you guys, I said, oh, yeah, this is a fashion show. I think someone who stood out to me was Xavier Worthy. He showed up. In his, in his, in I cannot I was like, oh, he, he, he stepped up. I was like, kudos to him. He looks good. He did step up. I cannot wait to talk to him about that because yeah. Xavier Worthy, next to you, was the quietest interviewer I have. And for him to come out in like this light blue pattern suit yeah. with the matching, I think Alexander McQueen's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just kind of like, is this his personality? Now yeah. I'm 
I'm a little mad now because it's kind of like you could be giving me more. <laughs> because you have a lot more to give, especially to be bold enough to wear that suit. <laughs> yeah, he, he's pretty quiet, but I mean, he's a ball player. He just lets his game speak for himself. So that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> describe to me some of the positives and the negatives of the O lineman. Um. So, so let's start with positives. I think that um, we came out with great energy. Uh, mm -hmm. We um um. Before we step out on uh, every drive, I touch each, uh, like, uh, Christian, Denzel, Junior, and Derek's helmet, and I tell them one mind, like, let's work together. And I felt like we did that uh, uh, yesterday. Um, I felt like we were aggressive. Uh, we were uh, – we had a sense of urgency getting to our assignments and stuff like that. We had great communication. Um, I would say some negatives, some stuff we need to work on is um, finishing blocks, just um, some pass protection things. We had a few uh, hiccups. Uh, one myself, you know, I got to fix that. I had to get the nervous plays out of me at the beginning of the game. I was kind of nervous, but I got in a rhythm after that. But, um, yeah, just some small things here and there. Uh, I felt like we played good, not great, and we still had an uh, explosive game in the run game and the pass game. So a lot to work on, and it's kind of exciting knowing that we didn't play our best and we put up numbers like that. Now, before I touch on that with you, just off subject, right as we're talking about him, guess who texts me? Mr. Xavier Worthy. What are you saying? Mr. Say? Xavier Worthy. He's asking what time are we doing his interview today? <laughs> we spoke him up. We yeah. spoke him up. <laughs> so you said that you guys did not play to the best of your abilities. Your expectations were higher. But what do you see, at least in your own self, could you have done better? Um, I think I could have finished some blocks better. I think I could have um, communicated a little bit more to clear any, um, you know, any of the gray area for, you know, who blocks who, where, where does this guy go, stuff like that. And over time, I feel like I'll get better at that. You know, it was the first game. I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I mean, I played last year, but uh, it was a new environment with all those fans being there and it being so loud. And you can only um, use so much audio of crowd noise at practice, but it doesn't match what you get during a live game. Right. Um, and and we were playing a very experienced team, so you know they were older guys, and um, you just got to work on a few things. But yeah. Yeah. What shocked you the most about Louisiana's defense? Um, they're. Uh, I, mean, I knew that they were very experienced. You know, they're returning everybody except one starter. Um, I guess what shocked me the most was just how together they were because they played together for so long. And it just seems like you know, everybody was hitting their uh, gaps right. Everybody, the linebackers were doing their job. And they just seemed really attentive of, you know, their assignments. So, yeah. Looks like they studied hard. Yeah, they did. They, for, for yeah. Sure. I understand that. And you were basically saying you just need to get the nerves out. It was just the yeah. first game. Yeah. And you and a lot of, I would say, the offensive linemen just needed to shake off the dust a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke with Keandre, though, um, before you, and he was talking about just the D-line and how it might have started a little bit slower in the beginning. Because, you know, you guys are going through nine months of training mm -hmm. and camp and just hitting each other. And you guys don't want to hurt each other. So then when you finally get into a game, it's kind of you feed off of the other team in a way. Yeah, and I think I that, that's what I saw from you guys. I yeah. kind of saw you guys feeding off of them like, okay, this is what we're doing today. Let me step we my just, game. Yeah, we just wanted to just get a feel for them. And, I mean, we go against Keandre and all them for so long. And, uh, you know, each D lineman, each D line unit kind of brings their own mentality. And we just wanted to see how it was, but also that's just something we need to work on. We, need, we just need to, you know, forget what they're bringing. Let's bring our own thing. And so we're going to work on that. And uh, you guys will see that as the season progresses. All around, who would you say shocked you the most this game? Uh, like, like good plays and doing Yeah, the good plays or just anything. Um, I'd say Hudson, his very first start. Mm-hmm. You know, he's my roommate, so it was awesome seeing him do that. 
um, and Jay Witt. Is it your roommate? Yeah. <laughs> was that the one who was screaming before? Who? When in the uh, no in the no that was that was a uh, Sawyer Gorm Welch uh, D lineman. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, I was definitely um, excited about Hudson again to start and doing really well. You know, I could tell he was really focused before the game and he put a lot of effort. And also Jay Witt, it was good seeing him healthy and you know doing what he does best, breaking people's ankles, stuff like that. So. But are those things not expected from them? No, Mike it is. Hudson, because he's expensive. a freshman, even though you guys have been seeing him at practice. I want to know who kind of just shocked you. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, the, the reason Jay Witt shocked me is because he's been, you know, in, he's had a lot of injuries. And I haven't been able to see him play, like, a lot, like, in a game. And so it was good seeing him do his thing because I know how good he is and seeing him, uh, you know, feed off of like the energy of the game and just do what he does best. That was awesome to see because I know he's a hell of a player. Yeah, with him, it just he made one really good play and then all of a sudden every single play after that was just yeah perfect. Yeah, it's it like- kind of felt like we were feeding off of him and his plays and we, you know, we built momentum and that's whenever we started rolling it was awesome I like it do you have any personal goals for yourself for the next game against Arkansas um I would say it's a good question I would just say work on communication with the O-line um recognize defenses a little more defensive fronts because sometimes it can get a little shady I need to know you know some tips on odd or even and um just finish blocks. Uh, you no, know, I got the first game out of the way, and now it's time to build on it and get better. And, and I'll work on that starting tomorrow. So, seeing some of the other Big Twelve powerhouse schools struggle this past weekend, you know, you guys won by twenty points. Oklahoma did not. On the other hand, neither did Iowa State, and those schools really stuck out to me because they usually give you guys you know, some good competition. Yeah. But seeing them struggle this past weekend, does that give you any form of just optimism moving forward? I'd, I'd say a small bit of optimism, but I know that how good they are. You know, Oklahoma win the Big 12 and Iowa State losing in the Big 12 championship. You know, it always seems like people struggle in the first week. I mean, the first quarter we were struggling. And, mm-hmm. you know, so I feel like, you know, the great teams always get better week by week. So, I feel like we'll see, you know, their best by the time we come around. Explain some of the struggle you guys were facing in the first quarter. Um, just the communication part it was really loud, and you know, uh, it was just it was just different compared to practice because you know there's not much crowd noise at practice, so we had to get used to that. And I mean, I think that was just the main struggle, just being able to communicate with it being so loud. Yeah, and I think people really underestimate that for you guys yeah there was ninety one thousand people in the stands that was awesome by the way no, right it was, it was <laughs> no, awesome. great. You know, it may not have helped me but it was just a good environment to be around it was awesome it was at around i was in the press box around 3 10 it wasn't full yet the students were and you guys were in stretching and that section was pretty full but i was looking around i was like there's a lot of spaces you know, maybe because of COVID, people are still really hesitant to go to the games, which is understandable. But then it feels like I looked down and looked up and every single seat was full. Like I was like looking over in the press box and I was just like, where did these, I wish I took a time lapse of it. Where did all- That would be pretty cool if you did do that. Yeah, like where did these people come from? Did it feel like it was just like night and day? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, uh, whenever I went out to stretch and do my thing, I saw the student section. I was like, okay, like it's a pretty big student section. And I went <laughs> back in and I uh, got dressed and I went out for my, uh, you know, my other stretch and snaps. And I look around, I was like, holy cow, where did all these people come from? And then we went back in and came back out and it was just fools. Like, geez, they keep on coming. They sure did. Yeah. Texas fans are definitely unmatched, in my opinion. Yeah. I love the Texas fans. What did you do to celebrate? Um, I mean, I came home, watched the Clemson game, and 
I uh, just hung out with my roommates. <laughs> just what it. did you think of that game? Let's go back to that. What did you think of the game? It was a defensive game. Georgia really showed out. They had seven sacks. That's crazy. Yeah, for people who don't know, Georgia won 10, Clemson three. Yeah, I was. it was a defensive game. I mean, I noticed that the only touchdown by the time I was watching was a pick six. So oh. I was like, wow, Georgia's really stepping up. Because I saw something how Kirby Smart is like, he's, he had six straight losses against top five teams in the AP pool. And, I mean, they showed out last night. So it's a good team. Yeah, they sure did. Okay, what else did you do to celebrate? Um, ate Chick-fil-A. Love me some Chick-fil-A. Um, hung out with Hudson. <laughs> just told me that he hates Chick-fil-A. Who said that? Snacks. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know how you can get on Chick-fil-A. He, he made it his business to mention that he is mad at Chick-fil-A right now. So it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> For what? What could they have done wrong? He said they didn't give him enough fries. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Good to you. Um, yeah, I mean, just watch the game with Hudson and uh, Logan Parr and Sawyer, you know, my roommates. And I mean, it was just a, just a chill night just hanging out. You guys have a victory now. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of – I mean, I don't really like to do too much. I just like to hang out with my friends and, you know, enjoy my time. And the time was probably well spent. It was. The anticipation is gone. I know, like, after I come back to the hotel after a race, I'm just like, I can stop wondering how things are going to go now. Yeah. (laughs) Because they went how they went, and now we're just sitting on the couch – (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was just a good feeling getting home and knowing that, you know, we won and uh, we gave the fans what they wanted and just felt like a really good weekend. Mm-hmm. And it definitely was. Yeah. Do you feel like it made you trust your coaching a little bit more after yeah. this game? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the key points that Coach Stark said before the game was, uh, you know, uh, whenever people play, there's some form of performance anxiety people who, you know, are anxious because they, they don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And one of the key points you said was to trust your training, trust your coaches. And I feel like I really leaned back on that because I I, mean, I know Coach Flood is not going to tell me something that's not going to happen or he's not going to tell me something that I don't need. So I feel like I really did that after the first couple drives. And I was a little nervous, but uh, I feel like I really leaned back on what he said and got in a rhythm and, I mean, you see the score, you know, we took off. So really Definitely did. That. Definitely did. Well, thank you for joining me for another segment of Center Stage with Jake Majors. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas football page on YouTube. Jake's Twitter, my Twitter. We have all of the episodes on there. Thank you so much for the support. And congratulations on your first win. One of thank many. You. Yep, one of many. Welcome. <laughs>